Hello and welcome to another drive-in double feature. I'm Ryan. I'm Nathan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. We have a Patreon over there at patreon.com slash driving double feature podcast. What do we have over there? Well, I've been leaving some clues in past episodes of, uh, of, of, of driving double feature uh, where I've been dropping some little hints. If you just put all the clues together, it's like a little uh, decoder, then they'll, they'll let you know exactly what the really going on over there. So, but you're going to have to listen to every episode again, because I'm dropping clues with since episode on. one. Yeah. Because we definitely that, no, no ad blockers, please. Go back <laughs> to episode one, come back here, then you'll know exactly where what to do. Mm-hmm. But don't worry, that doesn't affect any regular content whatsoever. We do the same content over here. No no secrets here. We keep everything out on the table. But today we're talking about 1978. Remember my name, which is directed by a returning director, Alan Rudolph. Um, now this one uh, is also, which I didn't realize when I got into the credits, that this one was also produced by Robert Altman. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> when his name popped up, which is funny because I, I think a lot of people compare this director to Robert Altman. <laughs> Well, like after when the movie was over, I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense that Robert Altman produced this. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, well, one, there's a lot of people from Robert Altman movies in this. So mm-hmm. it, that's, it's very, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but I kind of was thinking, like when I, when I saw this movie, so I mean, like the premise I saw was just that a woman is obsessed with, a married man and has been kind of stalking him and his family. So I, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be some type of crazy thriller. I'm thinking it's going to be some type of horror movie, something along the lines of maybe like fatal attraction or something like that, where you have like these real like women on like the edge type of Mm -hmm. thing. And they're, they're uh, terrorizing these families, but this one, I mean, there are some elements of that in there, don't get me wrong, but this movie is very subdued. It is very oh, much a yeah. drama, like, like very glacial-paced movie. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like a badass woman movie, because like I saw the poster, and it's got a yeah. star, Ger- Geraldine Chaplin, and she's got like a cigarette, and she's and got dark side sunglasses. Pro- ducks. Yeah, like, oh, she's cool. Okay, what's she gonna do in this movie? Or there's another one that. where she's like on the street corner, right? You saw that one with the neon I, lighting. Yeah, I thought yeah. I saw the exact same thing. That was my thought. <laughs> and this movie is so laid back. It is like it, it's um, I guess that's what makes it interesting. Is like just like you said, glacial, very I, slow. <laughs> I was not expecting Kino, Nathan. I was expecting <laughs> Schlock. I was not expecting. Like, well, you know it's Alan Rudolph. It's, Come on, Trouble in Mind is art in house Schlock. cinema. <laughs> yeah, thanks for picking art house cinema, Ryan, on our drive. I know. Jeez, podcast. I was not expecting that. I mean, so I mean, what, how this movie's different is, I mean, this movie starts with Geraldine Chapman getting out of jail, but. Um, I, uh, they don't really dole out the, all the information right away. I mean, they mm-hmm. don't like, they don't dump all this information on you that she's even getting out of jail or like how she got the jail or anything like that. It's very, very sparse. Now, my problem with that is, is when I was researching the movie initially before I picked it, like on Wikipedia, there is like a very small like mm-hmm. paragraph of like, oh, this movie is about blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it tells the whole plot of the movie oh so, man so so then when i got to the end of it so i was waiting for like the reveal because spoiler alert i mean the the reason why she's stalking this man because if you do want to watch it i do have to specify you need to watch you should watch the movie before yeah, you read anything th- this movie builds off of you not knowing anything oh, right and i knew everything going into it so that was kind of a problem for me but that's my problem but anyway mm-hmm. um the spoiler is, is that she was married to this guy in a previous marriage. And 
they don't say this until like the last two thirds of the movie. No, it, yeah, th- that's not, I thought this movie watching it, I did think it was like a fatal attraction thing, and it was really hiding that from me. Like, because uh, Anthony Perkins uh, plays the husband that she's obsessed with, and it's it, it, you know, it thinks you at least for me, I thought it was going to be like the normal schlocky movie where it's like, oh, you know, she he cheated on his wife with some crazy lady and now she's out for revenge on him and that's a, right. that's what you're thinking the whole time and then no it's i mean spoiler alert if you're interested uh but it yeah it's it's an ex-wife and she's just going crazy because she's out of prison yeah and i mean like i said they go that whole premise is you just kind of being in the mystery of why she's even terrorizing this guy and like i said in that paragraph it's like Oh, she's terrorizing him because she used to be married. I mean, it's like it's like three lines. It's uh, just like, yeah. And then, I, and I was like, okay, that sounds pretty interesting. So I, I was waiting for them to reveal that fact, and I'm like, oh no, I was supposed to not know that. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it. I still got a lot of a, a appreciation for certain things of this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, I mean, this movie even though this is produced by Robert Altman, this very much feels like if Robert Altman would direct like one of these types of movies, because he does have a lot of like relationship based movies where it's just like people talking. And there's a lot of talking in this one of them, like kind of working out their feelings for each other and everything. And mm-hmm. it, like I said, it just kind of leaving in the dark. And then they play, um, one other thing too, that's a reoccurring thing in Robert Altman movies is that like, there's like one, there's like, music playing throughout this movie and this one has like mm. one particular song that you hear all the time too yeah very bluesy uh music mm-hmm. too it just has an old feeling to it yeah no i agree that um there's multiple scenes where people talk over each other and that's that's kind of an altman thing not as like to the crazy degree that he would do it but that that's here as well it's very matter of fact um and, and it, like it even goes to the ending like the ending it you think when is this going to build up to something? Is it going to ever build up to anything? The answer is no. No. It never <laughs> does. It's just literally life and some ideas put on camera for you to watch. It's very 70s. Yeah, it's very much like, you know, it, you know you're kind of expecting everything to be kind of wrapped up in a nice package at the end of the movie. But like with a lot of these 70s movies, that we've talked about before, like, you know, you've seen in other art house cinema It's just, Mm -hmm. it's just like, Oh no, life goes on just as it is. And it's just, we don't, there really is no ending to this story. No. Um, I mean, cause the main thing of this movie is, uh, you know, she does, you know, she's getting out of prison. She gets a, a job at a department store, um, working under a Jeff Goldblum, (laughs) very young jeff goldblum he's looking very nerdy in this movie oh yeah they're definitely playing up the nerd factor in this one but Mm -hmm. uh he's got a little interesting story too because you know they 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 reveal little facts about his backstory where you know they're kind of like oh how's my mom doing and she's like oh she's good you know she's not on a work detail you know she's Mm -hmm. got a you know she's got her own private shower and you know it's like so, you know, it's kind of revealing that, you know, his mom, he, they know each other because his mom was in prison. His mom promised a job to her through her son. Mm-hmm. But then even later in the movie, when they have another interaction, you know, Jeff Goldblum was kind of like, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what it's like to have a mother that's murdered their father. And it's like, oh, wow, well, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it just dropped. Yeah, yeah. And that's information we didn't know we needed. And then it drops and it's like it adds like a whole nother layer to like their relationship. Which I think is interesting. There's a lot of that in this movie. Um, just slow, slow inklings of information. And I guess because yeah. a movie normally, like, I feel like screenwriters are willing to, like, give you exposition. Like, we've seen that a lot. Exposition dumps. Here you go. This movie doesn't really go for that. It's very naturalistic, right? Like, certain information only comes up when necessary to, like, say it to somebody else. Yeah, that's very much like expecting you to follow along for the yeah. ride it's not it's not gonna <laughs> this movie really doesn't uh hold your hand for the, like a lot of like mm-hmm. okay here's the part where i'm going to tell you exactly what's going to go on you know they don't really mm-hmm. have that moment you're really supposed to be no. kind of listening into all this stuff um no. there's another side story too where she moves into an apartment building and she mm-hmm. kind of 
um, forms a relationship with the uh, comp, like I guess the the handyman or like the the apartment or the apartment manager or something, something know, the land landlord yeah. maybe, but it's a guy named Pike, and you know she just kind of like it's almost like she's kind of using him like by the time we learn like at the end of the movie, cause you know, mm-hmm. she's trying to get like him to do stuff for her. Like, Oh, like I need this furniture upstairs or I need this special lock. And she ends up sleeping with him mm-hmm. and you know, she, she kind of like gets kind of curry some special favor with him. Yeah. And she, she's man, like you said, she's manipulative by the end of the movie. Like, cause at first you feel like it's like, something genuine because she's troubled and she kind of goes into his home and he's like and she's just like oh you know the, so many nice things and he's just like get out of my home lady and she cries on his shoulder and she just seems like somebody she needs somebody to talk to and as we learn maybe that's not exactly what she wants maybe she's just playing a role um yeah I have to say geraldine chaplin in this movie if there's one thing to take from it she is great in this movie she is creepy like just like the way she looks at people, the way she stalks Anthony Perkins and terrorizes his like new wife, it, she I think she plays it really well. Yeah, um, she does a really great. I mean, like I said, the the whole cast in this movie. I mean, I that one thing I've always you know with Robert Altman's like you usually see like really mm-hmm. great acting. There's really no bad acting performances in a lot of these movies. Um, yeah. And this one's no exception in my mind because, I mean, like you said, Geraldine Chaplin's in it because her and Jeff Goldblum were both in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And she had one of my favorite parts where she plays like an annoying like British reporter in that one. Mm-hmm. And uh, this one, you know, it's like completely against that, you know, like where she's, you know, very, uh, very, or she acts very mentally unstable a lot of times. And Yes. Yeah. She flies uh, off all constantly in this movie. But uh, we also have uh, Barry Bernson, Bernson, that was also uh, Anthony Perkins' real-life wife at the Mm -hmm. time. And uh, one fact I do want to say is that she was actually a a victim in one of the uh, September 11th attacks, and she was actually on one of those flights, So, which is crazy to think. Yeah, it's crazy to think about like that. What a... uh, significant event that was like how many people were affected by that right how many like famous people like yeah i mean it's definitely a tragedy it seemed like she had retired from acting for a while though like she it didn't you know she had anthony hopkins's um children they were married uh, perkins uh, yeah what did i say hopkins it's good lord yeah no nothing no (laughs) and anthony perkins like the restaurant and they had you know they had this on oz perkins together uh who, who is a film director everyone in this movie gives a really great performance you know anthony hopkins you know he's obviously trying to hide something from his current wife in mm-hmm. this one and his uh, wife in there is obviously just kind of like you know what the hell's going on like who is this woman yeah. and because it starts out really subtle of what she's doing like like she'll go like when uh, the wife parked her car, she went inside of the house real quick. And then when she came back to the car, mm-hmm. she found like her plants all ripped up and they were like in her car seat. And then like now her car wouldn't start. And, you know, she starts getting freaked out a little bit. And then like, and then it goes really sky high. Like when she's in, <laughs> she's in the, uh, her, when, the, she, when the wife's in the house and then Geraldine Chaplin like comes in to their house and just is like so like what's going on and she's like who are you and, <laughs> and she pulls a knife out on her and she like screams when she does it like ah, and like puts a knife right up to her face um yeah and, and then she crazy. starts laughing too she's just like oh like gotcha like, <laughs> yeah yeah that's probably one of the best moments in the movie probably if you're looking for thrilling moments it's one of the few you'll get in this movie also we have to say anthony perkins has uh he's kind of ripped in this movie which i wasn't expecting he's like shirtless (laughs) and he's got like six-pack abs wasn't expecting that from him well you know it's from that he's got that psycho weight you know the body from psycho oh he's He's still rocking the psycho body (laughs) Yeah, you gotta you gotta look good in a dress when you're doing that. That's true. Yeah, if you gotta wear, you gotta have abs to wear a dress. I, I, That's I true. It. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, they 
like they he doesn't even he's not even sure like who the woman was at first that was terrorizing them because they they wake up in the middle of the night because like a window gets broken and he mm-hmm. sees her kind of running off into the night so he didn't really get it like a good look but um at the end you know she kind of um they do finally call the cops on her and she's in the police lineup and you know the wife's like that's her like i know that i know that woman anywhere you know she's she's crazy and then anthony perkins you know he's kind of like uh is it okay if i talk to her for a little, for a little bit and they're yeah. just like huh no and that that's the thing is like that happens and all you can do is assume that they've broken up because they don't live together anymore all the scenes with both of them they're like gone from each other stuff's getting moved out um, you see his wife just watching TV at some point, um, which is the continued coverage of the giant Budapest earthquake, which kind of like pinpoint certain scenes in this movie in the background. Really weird. I, I don't know quite. No, I, I kind of understand. Maybe it's like this small insignificant thing is your front center when a million people have died across the, the world. Maybe it, it's, it's odd, but interesting. I, I do love hey. the line where they bring up the earthquake and he's like, oh, people aren't covering it because they just don't understand it. <laughs> why don't, why don't they just, why don't they just watch frog Einstein instead? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That is a funny <laughs> frog or sorry. That's a smart <laughs> frog. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a, I thought that was interesting. And they have that scene where they talk to each other and it just seems like, I don't know. Geraldine Chaplin's just kind of frustrated with the idea. It, She's gone crazy and prison's done a lot to her, but it's just like, you know, she, she was, she's had a rock. It was him. Just like, that's who I want to return back to. And then they come out and find out, Oh, he's gone. And with another woman just kind of drove her over the edge a little. Yeah. Cause I mean, the, it's, you know, they're kind of like, Oh, like, did she murder somebody? Like, why was she in jail? They're like, Oh, well, you know, I was, having an affair with somebody else and Mm -hmm. she kind of got wind of it but you know it wasn't that big of a deal like he's really downplaying that this woman just like (laughs) like tried to murder like his uh uh the somebody he was having an affair with so (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah and uh that's like the whole thing you know like his wife is kind of just like hey like i am like we need to press charges i'm like throw the book at this woman she's crazy Mm -hmm. and then anthony perkins is kind of just like like after he gets done talking with her you know he really feels for geraldine chapman because you know she's laying on the sympathy really thick just you know talking about like how lost she is and how incomplete she is without him and how hard everything's been and then he's just he's really kind of pities her just you know sympathizes and then you know when he gets when he gets done talking to her there he's like you know what we're not we're not gonna press any charges like don't worry about it yeah and it's just wife is just like what <laughs> yeah and here's the thing this is where i i don't know why i still thought this movie was gonna do something because i thought it was gonna lead to something you know he let her go See, same she, yeah and i and she actually they meet up again and they get extremely drunk together and I'm like, okay, this is leading up, and they sleep together. I'm like, okay, not, she's gonna like burn down the place. She's gonna get some revenge or something on him. What's gonna happen? And uh, like I said, no, that does not happen. And I was, uh, I found that very interesting because even in the slowest of movies, usually they like to end on some kind of like anchor point, like we stinger. Still to yeah, this. yeah. And that doesn't really happen here. You're not gonna experience that. No, I mean they they kind of like you said they kind of. <clears throat> his wife leaves him mm-hmm. and he's so he's and and like this whole time too like anthony perkins's life is just kind of like spiraling out of control because even his boss played by dennis franz is there mm-hmm. and uh they're uh he, he's like in a construction job and you know he's he loses his job he gets fired on the spot because you know mm-hmm. he's kind of like basically threatening to beat up his boss like because he got stiffed on his pay a little bit and then um so like he's kind of like he's reached like at the rock bottom because his wife has pretty much left him because he didn't press charges he's lost his job he doesn't have anything left and while he's working you know he sees geraldine chaplin over there like in the uh on the site you know he's just kind of like hey you know let's 
let's grab a drink, you know, let's, let's, let's go have some, let's go have some fun type of thing. And mm-hmm. they, they have the drink, like you said, and that scene too, like they, uh, they, one thing I did read is that Anthony Perkins actually did get really drunk. Really? <laughs> yeah. And they were just like, Alan Rudolph was talking about like, you know, how he actually got drunk and that they were just, he just spent like the whole morning drinking like to, for that scene. <laughs> and then he said, he said, all right, did you get everything? And they're like, yeah, do, you, do we need to do any retakes? He's like, no, I think we're good. And he said immediately, Anthony Perkins just like picked up a trash can and starts throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> just like because he had drank so much. Oh, my God. And, and uh, but yeah, they, like you said, they kind of re- reminisce. They go back into to, uh, her apartment that she's living in and they have sex. And she's just like, she just gets up walks out the door gets into her car um pike is just kind of like walks in on anthony perkins uh you know sleeping in his bed and he's just like because you know he's obviously has feelings for this woman too Mm -hmm. and he's like hey like what are you doing in in her bed he's like well what's it look like i'm doing Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then so you know he's kind of felt betrayed by Geraldine chaplin anthony perkins you know he's just kind of like assuming like she just went out for a little bit but uh Geraldine Chaplin just kind of gets in her car. She goes out and changes her clothes and then gets in her car and she just drives off into the, on the, on the road. And that's yep. it. And credits play. Yeah. She kind of got what she wanted, I guess. I guess she just wanted to sleep with him and kind of shake things up. And I, I kind of yeah. got the impression. It's just like, she wanted to ruin his life. And yeah. she, she did because, you know, she's, he's lost his job. He doesn't have a, um doesn't have his wife has just left him and then she locked him in the apartment too which i mean that won't kill him but still that's you know it's just kind of like I, yeah so it's it was kind of just like oh i've shut the door on that life i'm moving on so yeah, i had my uh, say so she kind of got her revenge in a certain way um it didn't but yeah like you said i was kind of expecting like this big ending like you know she kills him or like you know they get into like a final fight or something like that but Mm -hmm. that's kind of like you know like one of these uh, movies that just doesn't really have like a conclusive ending you know it's kind of left you to form your own opinions on that and you know i was like i said i was kind of was in the mood for (laughs) a real schlocky type of movie like that which uh, luckily Mm -hmm. the other movie was pretty fun on its own the one we did on tuesday Mm-hmm. So that kind of made up for it at least. But um, but this one, like I said, I mean, it's it surprised me in a way I wasn't expecting because, you know, like I said, I was expecting like a dumb thriller movie, but it's ends up being like a real, um, you know, like a real like artistic type of movie. Yeah, yeah. So I came out of it. I didn't necessarily love it, but it, it it's it's good. I appreciate it. And I think I like it more than that. We've talked about it. Cause like, it doesn't tell you anything flatly or plainly. You have to describe and talk about motivations because you're actually quite unsure of the whole movie, which I like that in a movie. I like seeing risks like this. And um, I still think like, if we're talking about director, I think I like trouble in mind more that has a little mm-hmm. more of like the silly side that I enjoy but this is a really interesting movie. I will say that. I, I think it, it's a very cool yeah. movie. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nothing amazing and it's nothing like other, like you said, like trouble mine or anything like the other Robert Altman movies. It's very mm-hmm. much like a very low key subdued version of that. And mm-hmm. um, I guess I would have liked for a little more something. melodrama maybe yeah. in there, like something that just kind of, hooks me in just a tad mm-hmm. or maybe like it just it takes her to that next level where you know she's like oh wait she actually is crazy you know she murdered a guy or she murdered mm-hmm. somebody or you know just something like that but didn't really didn't really have that final punch that i wanted so i wasn't like in love with the movie but i do appreciate what it was trying to do yeah it, it didn't i want to watch more of this guy's movies <laughs> that, that's all i came out of this with yeah so Overall, you know, I would say it's it's a it's a recommend. It's, you know, it's a good movie. Um, like I said, I wouldn't go in expecting like a big action movie or anything like that. You know, if you're if you're looking for something that's more along those lines, like if you love the movies, like you know, shortcuts or 
<laughs> uh, Nashville or something like that. You know, they're not as funny as that or like as dramatic or serious, but you know, it's along those types of lines. It's more of like the tone that they're kind of going for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I totally just uh, agree with you. I, I piggyback off of it. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend it. If you like, if you like Altman, I think you'll enjoy this exactly. Like you said, just not as not, not doesn't have quite the humor, but, um, it's just an interesting movie. Not much like it. Um, I can, and I can appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So that's going to do it, I believe for this movie. Um, so we're going to move on to our regular scheduled uh, week. So Nathan, what are we doing next week? All right. Well, Ryan, let's do it. Let's get back to it. It's time to talk about some anime. Oh, yeah. It's anime week here at Drive and Double Feature You're Podcast. You were begging for it. Oh, I was begging for it. You know it. Um, and then <laughs> so on Tuesday, we're going to be talking about Metropolis from 2000. One that is not streaming anywhere, so you would have to rent it if you do want to watch it. But okay. Ryan, let everybody know what we're covering on Thursday. Well, Nathan, it's actually going to be a sequel to a movie we've talked before, and it's actually going to be Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Oh, okay. And that one actually does have the English dub for free on YouTube right now. Perfect. All right. I'm yes. excited. Well, Yep, can't wait. But if you have any thoughts and opinions about the podcast, please email us over at drive and double feature podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on X at DIDF Pod. And once again, check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash drive and double podcast. But until next time. Until next time. Until next time.